Brother Jerry, you didn't know what I was going to be sharing about this morning. And I'd like to share just a couple of these scriptures before we leave. I was going to share about peace and having peace even when things don't look all that great. And I just want to go ahead and share real quick Psalm 4 talks about getting a good night's sleep. Anybody had trouble ever sleeping? Anybody ever had something heavy on your heart that you just couldn't seem to shake? And you try to pray and you try to intercede and it just doesn't seem like the peace comes. And I want to read Psalm 4, and I, I'm just going to skip down. You can read the rest of it later, but to verse 8. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Yahweh, make me dwell in safety. I'm going to read that again. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Yahweh, make me dwell in safety. Brother Jerry, my, my nights in recent days have been full of stuff that I couldn't do anything about. But I was tugging, uh, doing a tug of war with God like I could do something. And I couldn't do anything. It was in his hands. And I felt like that the Lord was going to have me to preach this to myself this morning. That the only way that we can have peace, the only way we can have peace is when we recognize that Yahweh makes us to dwell in safety. It's Yahweh. It's God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Him that can make us dwell, make us dwell in safety. He alone, He alone can make us dwell in safety. He's the only one in whom we can put our trust and our faith and our hope. And it seems like that oftentimes we want to play tug of war with Him when are we going to learn that we need to let go of the rope? He's going to win anyway. He's going to win anyway. And if he's got charge of the situation, then we can rest in that. We can rest in him. He is our rest. Praise God. He is our peace. When we look at Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ Rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be very personal and open and transparent with you. I went to the doctor on Friday. And uh, my cancer doctor. And he said that. Uh, the indicators are that I need to go back on medicine in order to prevent me from reintroducing chronic myeloid leukemia. Friday afternoon, after I went to the doctor, I was in the mully grubs. I don't know what the mully grubs are, but I was in them. And I was thinking, you know, Lord, but you know, thank God, 
I went and took a power nap. Anybody know what that is? Five minutes. Man, it does wonders for your day. And I just released it all to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I'm going to take a power nap. Five minutes later, when I woke up, I had such a peace from God. Hallelujah. The peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. And, and I, I woke up with the realization, God's got this. You don't have to worry about it, Philip. God's got it. God's got it under control. And, you know, today is the day of prayer for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world where we pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters and Saeed Abedini and those in Iran that are imprisoned. And all over the world, there's many people suffering and even dying for their faith right now. And more than ever, there's more people being persecuted for their faith than ever in all of the history of humankind. Right now, there's more people being persecuted for their faith. And, you know, I think about what they're facing right now. They're in jail. They're in prison. They're being tortured for their faith. I'm tired of this American wimpy Christianity that's ready to give up whenever God doesn't do everything that we tell him to do. I'm tired of this American Christianity that pretends God's a microwave and punch in the buttons and then we wait and then there's no noise. There's no little ding. There's no, it hasn't happened exactly the way we think. That's because he's God and we are not. And it may be time to, for us to stop telling God what to do and for us to start yielding our lives to him and saying, God, you've got this. God, it's under your control. It's under your sovereignty. You are king of kings. You are lord of lords. There's nothing too hard for you. We submit and yield to you, and you've got this, God. Hallelujah. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. What's the peace of Christ? It's the peace of that belongs to Christ. It's the peace that comes from Christ. In John 14, 27, he said, my peace, Jesus said this, my peace I give you. I would say that's the peace of Christ, wouldn't you? My peace I give you. I do not give you peace like the world gives you. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not let it be cowardly. His peace is a peace not like the world. His peace is an overcoming, triumphant peace. And if we let the peace of Christ rule and reign in our hearts, then his peace is going to draw the boundary lines of what needs to be in our minds and what doesn't. Do not let your heart be troubled. Why is that? Because if it's troubled, you're not listening to my peace. Let the peace of Christ rule your heart. So we can't let our heart be troubled. We can't let our heart be cowardly or intimidated or afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear or cowardice or timidity, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. We can't allow the enemy to intimidate us, to make us cowardly, afraid. His peace is the kind of like the governor switch in our hearts. And it's going to say, your heart's troubled? Well, you need to get a good focus on my peace. Your heart's cowardly, intimidated, afraid? Well, then you need to refocus on my peace. Hallelujah. The peace of Christ is able to point out what's not like itself. Do you hear me? Your heart being troubled is not like the peace of Christ. Your heart being afraid is not like the peace of Christ. And so 
when you want to know what the genuine thing is, you don't study the counterfeit. You study what the genuine thing is. And so when you study the genuine thing, the peace of Christ, then you don't let your heart be troubled because you know that's counterfeit. You don't let your heart be afraid because you know that's counterfeit. You don't let your heart be intimidated or cowardly in Jesus' name, but you stand up and you say, no, sir, I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. I'm not going to let my heart be afraid. Hallelujah. I'm going to let the peace of Christ rule and reign in my heart. Hallelujah. Let the peace of Christ rule. When I, stood, when I studied this word, it really opened my eyes. It's the Greek word brabuo. It only occurs here in the whole Bible. This is the only time that it occurs. And it was used in ancient times. It means to act as an umpire in the public games. When they would have the public games, they would appoint designated umpires. And these umpires would arbitrate or they would preside over the games. And this is the subjunctive form, so it means to allow to act as an umpire, to allow to arbitrate or preside over. So when I, when I go to translate it, uh, move to the next slide, if you will, Steve. When I go to translate it, this is the way that I translate it. Now, this may not be the way you look at it, but this is how I come to grips with the meaning of the word. Let or allow the peace of Christ to be the umpire of your hearts. Let or allow the peace of Christ to be the referee of your hearts. Let or allow the peace of Christ to preside over your heart. In other words, the peace of Christ gets to be the judge. The peace of Christ gets to be the referee. The peace of Christ gets to be the umpire. And so, uh, the next slide, Steve. The peace of Christ gets to call a foul. The peace of Christ gets to say something's out of bounds. The peace of Christ gets to declare the winners and the losers. The peace of Christ gets to award prizes. That's what the umpires did. That's what the referees did. When you signed up for the public games, you signed up to submit to whatever the ruling was of the empire. And that umpire or referee got to say what is and what isn't. They get to call the shots. They get to call out of bounds. They get to call foul. Whatever the case may be, the peace of Christ is the umpire, is the referee of our hearts. And so, hallelujah, when I let the peace of Christ rule and reign in my heart, he gets to say, uh uh. What are you thinking about again? No, sir. Haven't I told you to leave that alone? Haven't I told you to go to sleep? Haven't I told you to stop worrying? Haven't I told you to stop fretting? Haven't I told you that I've got this? Haven't I told you that I'm big enough I, I can be in charge of this. Would you quit worrying? Would you quit tug of war with, playing tug of war with me? I've got this. I've got it under control. And I'm telling you to lay off of the way you've been thinking. That's what he said to me. Lay off the way you've been thinking. So I guess I'm going to let. Everybody say let. You got to let. The peace of Christ is well able, but you got to let. You got to allow. And when you begin uh, stinking thinking, and you start allowing your heart to be troubled, you start allowing it to be afraid, then you're allowing something other than the peace of Christ to rule and reign in your heart. And it's time for me. <laughs> it may be it's not time for some of y'all to say enough's enough. 
It's time to quit playing the same tapes over and over in your mind. Oh, tapes, that's old, isn't it? CDs, uh, MP3, whatever, whatever it is the, the now is. But you got to quit. You can't, you can't really push rewind on the CDs as well as you can on the tapes, though. And that's what we do. We rewind and we play the same piece of tape over and over and over again. Oh, what if that happens? 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 Well, what if God happens? What if God happens? What if God shows up in the midst of your situation, in the midst of your crisis that you're in? Why don't you let God show up and let him take care of your thinking? Hallelujah. When it comes down to where we realize that our thoughts have to be put underneath the feet of Jesus. I want to skip down to Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Did you hear that? The God of peace. Well, well that, shouldn't that say war? I mean, he's talking about crushing Satan under our feet shortly. Well, it might say war if God wasn't going to win. But God's going to win. And it's the peace of Christ that so fills us that it absolutely dislodges the enemy. It absolutely gives no room, no place for the devil. It absolutely kicks him out. It's the peace of God that kicks out the violence of the enemy. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, God is a mighty warrior, and I'm thankful for that. God is able to, to defeat every foe. But I remember... My good friend Rabbi Michael Weiner once told me that peace is not necessarily the absence of war. Peace is the presence of God. And when the presence of God comes and overflows, it dislodges everything that is not like itself. It puts to flight everything that is not like itself. It, ca it calls upon the peace of God, and all of a sudden, uh, everything that's standing against the peace of God is overflowed by the peace of God, and it has to leave. It has to leave. And so the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. This is, this is my take on it. I put on the whole armor of God and I bind the devil. I stop the devil from any word that he would try to speak into my mind, any word that he would try to speak into my heart. In Jesus' name, I crush under my feet every work of darkness, every work of worry, every work of stress, every work of manipulation that the enemy would try to pull over on me. And in Jesus' name, I bring it all under the subjection of the peace of God, the peace of Christ, the peace of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, is love, joy, and peace. Hallelujah. And if you've got the Holy Spirit, then you're going to have love overflowing. You're going to have joy overflowing. You're going to have peace overflowing in your life. And when you yield to the Holy Spirit of God, hallelujah, you can triumph over every obstacle. You can triumph over every thought that comes against you, everything that would try to grip your heart with trouble and worry and fretting. You can crush it under your feet in the name of Jesus because you've got the power and you've got the authority in Jesus' name. But all that power and all that authority doesn't do you one good, one bit of good until you let. 
let, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. And there may be some other folks besides me that needed to hear this message this morning. There may may be some other folks that the enemy has been attacking in your heart, in your mind. You've been plagued with worry. You've been plagued with fretting. You've not been able to sleep at night. There's been one thing after another, and it may be time, along with myself, it may be time for some of you that are here this morning to let go and let God, to let the peace of Christ take charge of your heart and your mind. I'm going to ask right now that we would all just bow our heads No one looking around. Philip, this word was for me this morning. You read my mail. You didn't just read yours. There have been all kinds of thoughts plaguing me and perplexing me. and There's been attacks on my heart, attacks on my mind. And I want to say to you this morning, Philip, that I'm ready to let the peace of Christ rule and reign in my heart. Would you raise your hand? No one looking around. Yes. Keep it up. Keep it up. No one looking around. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. People all over the building. Hallelujah. 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 All right, I'm going to ask everyone to open your eyes. And I'm going to ask you to take a position of authority. A position of authority. I'm going to ask you, in Jesus' name, according to the Word of God, to raise your right hand. And declare with me that Jesus Christ is Lord. Will you do that? Will you do that right now? Jesus Christ is Lord. A place of authority right now. Jesus Christ is Lord. One more time. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want you to begin to pray and intercede right now with hands lifted up. I'm going to ask you to pray and intercede and begin to submit every thought to the Lord. Begin to submit everything that's been bothering you, every every problem. Oh, hallelujah. Everything that's been dragging you down. I'm going to ask in Jesus' name that you, you submit right now in Jesus' name. Father, we submit our lives. We submit our hearts. We submit our minds. Father, we submit to you, Father. We're we're choosing today to let, to allow the peace of Christ to rule and reign in our hearts. We choose today to allow the peace of Christ to be the umpire in our hearts. We choose, we allow to allow the peace of Christ to be the referee in our hearts. We choose in Jesus' name to allow the peace of Christ to be the governor of our hearts. In Jesus' name, we're going to allow you, Jesus, hallelujah, and we're going to allow your peace, hallelujah, to come in right now and flood, to flood our hearts, to flood our minds in the name of Jesus and to dislodge every work of darkness, to dislodge every work of the devil, to dislodge every, every thought pattern of darkness. In Jesus' name, we allow the peace of Christ to take over 
power, hallelujah, to take over our hearts, to take over our minds. Oh, invade us, invade us, oh God. Invade us with the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Invade us with the peace of Christ, hallelujah. And have it. let the peace of Christ take over our hearts, take over our minds, take over our souls, take over our spirits, take over even our bodies. In Jesus' name, let the peace of Christ rule and reign in us. Hallelujah. And now in Jesus' name, we come into agreement. We come into agreement and we take authority. We take authority over every work of darkness. We take authority over every work of the devil. We take authority over every thought bondage in Jesus' name. We take authority over every process that our mind continues to renew that is not of Christ. And we claim in Jesus' name that the God of peace, hallelujah, the God of peace will crush Satan under our feet shortly. And right now, we make that declaration in Jesus' name, the God of peace is going to crush Satan under our feet shortly. And we declare in Jesus' name that everything that is not like the peace of Christ has got to come underneath the dominion of Jesus Christ. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Be gone from me and my house. Be gone from me and my congregation. Be gone from the people of God. In Jesus' name, I'm asking, Father, that you loose the presence and power, the anointing of your Holy Spirit to flood hallelujah to flood this place with your love with your joy with your peace hallelujah father we're asking in Jesus name we're asking in Jesus name that this will be done for your glory and for your honor the peace of God that passes all understanding the peace of God that doesn't even make sense the peace of God that doesn't even, uh, that, that when people look on and they see that we've got the peace of God and they see what we're facing, they wonder how in the world we're facing what we're facing, but we're not facing it in ourselves. Hallelujah. We're dead in Christ and Jesus Christ has come alive and it's his peace. It's his peace. Hallelujah. It's his peace that's in charge, that's governing. In Jesus' name, we're dead. He's alive. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I wish someone would lift up a shout of praise to him. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when you get ready to leave, I want you to make a declaration to at least two or three people before you leave. Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Amen? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Amen? Amen. So I want you to declare to someone, peace be to you. Before you leave, we're going to pray in just a minute, and then when it's time to leave, I want you to find at least two or three people. And I want you to say, peace be to you. And when you're saying that, you're not talking about your own peace. You're talking about the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. That all-consuming peace. Hallelujah. That's able to overtake everything in their life and in your life that's not like like the peace of Christ. So uh, I'm going to pray right now. And then when you're dismissed, I want you to make that declaration to at least two or three people Peace be unto you. Amen. Father, I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful, hallelujah, for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. I am thank you for moving and ministering in the body of Christ today. Father, we're thankful for our cup overflows. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, we're asking in Jesus' name that as we go forth from this place, that we would go bearing peace, bearing the peace of Christ, that that overwhelming peace, Peace that passes all understanding 
would be the governor of our lives, Lord, everywhere we go, whatever we do, in all ways, in all things, Father, that we would be aware of that peace governing our hearts and our minds. Thank you, Father, for for this day. Thank you for all that you've done in this day already, and thank you for what you're going to do. And, Father, I'm saying, I'm saying this in Jesus' name. I'm declaring this over your, your congregation. Peace be unto you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You're dismissed.